In the previous video, we saw an overview of how the transformers work. We saw that there are encoder stacks here, then there is the decoder stacks here, and there is also the input over here. In this video, we will focus mainly on the input embedding here and how a positional encoding is added to it and fed into the network. And one thing to note over here is that even though like we have all of these words which are represented as vectors in this case and unlike in RNNs, it is not fed one by one, it is fed all together. But if you have a sentence, the cat is on the mat, it won't be fed like the is fed first, cat is fed second, etc. It should all be fed together. And in the case of state of the art models, this could be like 20,000 in length. It need not be one simple sentence. It can be 128,000 length as well. So it can have later references to this previous words or sentences, etc. But at the same time, we are not feeding any of these sentences or words one by one. We are giving it all together. So there needs to be some kind of a way to differentiate if this word comes first or this word comes first or if, what is the difference between the cat is on the mat or the mat is on the cat because in the end we are just giving the representations of these words or these tokens and the representation for the word the is the same for both of these cases and for mat and cat is different but there is no specific order we are giving this in. So this is why we need some kind of a positional embedding for this. So as it is established that we have different embeddings for each of these words initially and this is done by first mapping each of these words. Let's say if you have the three letter word the, it will have an input ID. It might have let's say 500 as input ID. Cat has 1026. Ease has let's say 5. So and so on. And this in turn will be mapped to a certain initial word embedding. This might be initialized at a specific value and then this would also be trained later through the transformer model. And in some other models, this might be fixed or this might be learned and then used for other models. For transformers, what is being done is it is initialized with a certain value and then it is also learned along with the remaining weights and parameters in the model. So it is first mapped and then you get an input embedding for this. Now the issue is that even though this the and this the has the same value, we need to somehow add some kind of a positional information to it. So you might say that we can just directly add some kind of a value over here. Let's say this is the first and this is the second. We can just add some kind of a number to it. But there are several shortcomings to it. Uh, one is that it cannot extend to let's say something like 128k tokens that would be very difficult to add some kind of a value like that. Additionally, it is quite difficult to understand how far one word is from the other. Let's say how far cat is from the mat. Or if you go further down and you say like it is something and then how far it is from cat etc. That kind of an information is quite difficult to frame just by adding some kind of a number here. In the original attention is all you need paper. They use a certain kind of encoding called sinusoidal encoding. Let us go into depth about this. So in this paper, they use this formula, which is a bit confusing at first, to the positional encoding. PE stands here for positional encoding. And position is the position of the word. So if you have, let's say for our example, we have 20 positions and we have 50 different dimensions for each word. Let's say if the word is the, it has 50 rows of information and that is what represents the word the. And that is the case for each of these words. So the cat, if it starts with the cat, then the will be the first word and it has like 50 dimensions. And what i stands for here is which dimension it is. So this is i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2, i is equal to 3, etc. up to i is equal to 50. And we need to, when we encode the word the, like we already have an embedding over here and we need to add the positional encoding over here. 
So instead of you just add it, you might think you can just concatenate it here, you can add it here, but that would in turn just increase the overall dimensionality. And instead of 50, it will just become so much more and that is quite unnecessary. You can directly add it here, it's a trick. And the model will be able to learn it. And once you get into the attention mechanisms, I'll explain how this works in detail. For now, we'll understand that the positional encoding is directly added to the input embedding we already have. So how this is calculated is that all of the even positions, as you can see here, uses the sine function. And all of the odd positions over here uses the cosine function. And it has a certain frequency associated to it. And it is dependent on the dimension of the representation. That may be a bit difficult to grasp at first. So let me give you an example. Over here, you can see that some of these frequencies are very low. Okay, the cosine and sine functions are very low. It's like a low frequency wave. And in the middle, it's like a middle frequency. And that is what in effect this formula does. The advantage of this is that if you take one portion over here and the next portion over here, you can see that there are slight differences in the value. If this is 0 0.1, maybe the next portion will be somewhere around 0 0.15, etc. And uh, only as you move further down, it like shows some kind of a difference. At the same time, if you look at these values over here, if you look at the position uh, 1 or like 2, these will have a lot of variance in between them. This is even better illustrated using the binary counting analogy. So in binary, you count 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, etc. Right? And then later on, the next one pops in if you just put in, put in zeros here. The next one pops in, you get 11000 and then you get 1001 and you keep going. Now, you can easily say that these two are adjacent to each other by comparing this least significant bit. And you can see that uh, this is a certain distance from 1010. Like even if you have the zero same over here, because this one changes, you can see that it is at a certain distance, like at a distance of two from each other. And if there is a one over here and there's a zero over here, you can say that, okay, this is at this particular distance from this. So, and you can see these change very slowly. Like uh, as you go into the more significant digits in this binary representation, you can see that these change very slowly whilst these change very frequently. The similar thing which happens here that these waves have very high frequency and some of these waves have very low frequency. And when you obtain the position for two, you just take a section from here and you take the values which are obtained from here. Let me illustrate this better using this graph. Over here, the position is on the x-axis and the dimensions are over here. And as you can see, as a position, let's say the first word, which is the cat is, it goes like that. The cat is on the mat, etc. So each of these words have, let's say, 50 dimensions. And the differences between mat, cat and mat, as you can see, the value changes ever so slightly over here. But at the same time, the dimensions which are like, 0, 1, etc. They change very rapidly. Over here there is 1 and when you go to mat, it reaches the red which is like almost minus 1 over here. It changes quite rapidly in these values. Depending on the position, how the embedding changes varies. And in this manner, you can easily differentiate between, let's say, if it is something over here and here. Uh, and over here and here and if you take the dimension around 12 you can see that it doesn't change so much over here but it changes very rapidly over here and in this manner you can find the relative position between these two values and also note that we might be passing on several sentences or like several 20 context length data to the transfer model and all of them will have a similar dimension and in each of these 20 context length data we are sending it, it will have a same kind of a positional embedding. So in that way, the model will be able to understand that, okay, these numbers mean that 
this has something to do with the positional embedding of it in production size models it won't be 20 positions or let's say 50 dimensions it will have much more and this code is from the tensorflow demo of uh, the transformer model and here you can see the depth which is the dimensionality and the length which is the context length let's say this was 20 in our case and the depth was 50 here the depth is taken as divided by 2 because half of the depth like 25 will be calculated using sine uh, which is the even portions and the others odd portions will be calculated using the cosine function and that will be concatenated over here so you get the total positional encoding and this is the direct implementation of this formula over here in this graph you can see that it is a bit more dizzying than the previous graph this is because there are 2048 positions and there are 512 dimensions and the reason you're seeing two graphs over here is one is for sine and one is for cosine and as you can see the lower dimensions over here has very high frequency and as you go to the higher values over here let's say depth 500 or let's say around 250 in the case of cores uh, they have very low frequency it just goes to zero and only slowly climbs to one over here and if you take some portion in between this you can easily see that there's very high frequency in the lower dimensions or like let's say around 280 etc the frequency is pretty high and for the higher frequencies in both of these cases it will move very slowly so if you take one point uh, let's say at 750 and let's say around 120 over here it still moves very slowly but at the same time if you go towards 2000 it moves pretty fast over here so in this partial encoding you can f see the long term dependencies let's say from the distance between the word 2000 to let's say the word 10 using these dimensional values but at the same time you can find the difference between let's say 500 and something closer by using some kind of a dimension which is lesser than that so for the odd portion we'll have one value from here and then the next even portion we'll have it over here and then it keeps moving like that i hope you have a decent understanding of uh, positional encoding now i will also provide some more links in the description if you want to explore this more but as i said the sinusoidal encoding is just used in the attention is all you need paper and this was back in 2017 this is just one ingenious way of encoding the position. There is a lot of other possible ways which has been found later on and one is the rotary encoding which is called rope and in that what they do is uh, they just take a complex plane and they put the first word over here, the second word over here, third word over here. They just use a complex number and multiply it and this rotate it a bit and that value is added in the complex form. In the case of the initial GPT uh, they did not use the partial encoding we just studied now instead they just used a learned encoding that means that initially some values were given and the model had to learn the partial encoding as well there is still research going on about what is the best possible partial encoding right now but it is to be understood that for models based on the transformer architecture it is quite necessary to have some kind of a partial encoding so that there is the personal data which is transferred into the model. In the next part in the series, we'll look into more depth about how attention works. Self-attention, which is different from cross attention we talked about before, is at the very heart of the transformer model.